Welcome to our second Mac Studio video tutorial focusing on Max Maps. This time we'll deal with the model templates. For various common questions, Max Maps provides automatic models that allow you to arrange and connect your data automatically on a map. In this video, we'll take a look at these models one after the other. In the Max Map Start menu, you'll find two menus with model options. Which menu you choose to use will depend on whether the map should focus on documents or codes. Let's look at the document models first. In the document menu, you'll see two options. Different single case models to analyze a single document or single group of documents, and the two case model to compare two documents or two different groups. Let's start at the top with the single case model with coded segments. By clicking on this option, all your documents will be displayed on the left, and a note will pop up in the white area on the right telling you what to do next. If you now drag a document onto the map, a tab with options for the map design will open on the left, and you will already be able to see a preview of your map on the right. In the middle of the map, you can see the document I just selected. That's also why you can see the codes that were assigned in the document placed in a circle around that document. At the top, under the heading, you will see the memos associated with this document. In the left menu, you can now design the map more precisely. You can select which memos in the document you want to have displayed, whether all the codes or only activated codes should be displayed, whether the symbol size and connecting lines should show how often a code occurs in the document, and whether the coded segments should be displayed, and how many. On the right, you can see a preview of my selection now. And when you're satisfied with the map, click here to save it. Like all other maps, you can now freely edit this map as you wish. You can move it, rename it, edit it, and connect the individual elements. You can also drag and drop additional elements from your project onto the map. Let's now take a closer look at the other document models. The models for summaries and paraphrases have a similar structure. Again, a document is placed at the center of the map. However, instead of codes, this time summaries or paraphrases are displayed around the document. An individual case does not necessarily need to be a single document. A document group or document set can also be placed at the center of the map. You can also create individual case models for individual speakers of focus group discussions. Instead of a document or a document group, the model then focuses on a particular speaker. In the single case model code hierarchy, just as with the normal single case model, a case in the form of a document, a document group, or a document set is placed at the center of the map. However, for this model, the corresponding codes are arranged in the hierarchy of your code system instead of in a circle around the document. Subcodes are thus subordinate to the existing main codes. The two-case model is used to show the extent to which codes occur identically or differently in two documents, two document groups, or two document sets. The map then looks like this. The two cases are arranged next to each other, and in the middle, the codes that were assigned in both cases are displayed. At the outer edge, on the far right and far left, the codes that were assigned in only one of the cases are displayed. And the frequency of the codes in the respective document can be seen by the connecting lines. Now let's look at the code models. As the name suggests, these model templates place codes in the center of the map. Let's start with the single code model. After selecting this model, your codes will now be displayed on the left instead of your documents, and you can drag the desired code to the right area. The code is displayed in the middle of the map, and the coded segments are arranged around it. The memos appear under the model's heading, with the code memo, if there is one, linked to the code by a connecting line. This map is useful, for instance, if you want to check whether the name of your code corresponds to the content of the coded segments. In another variant of this model, the single code model for summaries, all existing summaries are displayed around the code. For the code theory model, a particular code is also placed at the center of the map, 
But here its subcodes and associated memos are arranged around that code. In the codes, subcodes, segments model, the map displays a code, its subcodes, and their coded segments. You can therefore use this map to take a look at the relationships between codes and subcodes. The hierarchical code subcodes model is similar in structure, but instead of being displayed in a circle, the subcodes are displayed in the hierarchy of your code system. In the design options, you can do a number of things, such as limit the display to activated codes and documents, or specify that the code symbols should be displayed larger the more frequently that code has been assigned. The code distribution model displays the documents in which a code has been assigned. The connecting lines can optionally show the exact number of times the code occurs in a document. Alternatively, the code frequencies can determine the line thickness of the connecting line or the size of the symbol. And the last model types we'll look at are the code co-occurrence models for the analysis of code relationships. The three types of relationships that can be studied are codes that overlap, codes that are close to each other, and codes that occur somewhere in the same document. Let's take a closer look at one of these models. This time you drag several codes to the right area onto your map. All the codes whose relationships you want to investigate. These codes will be displayed in a circle on the map. All codes that occur along with these codes i.e. that were assigned to the same segments, will be arranged in a network structure around them. If you want, the subcodes of the selected codes can also be inserted. These subcodes are then connected to their parent codes by red lines, regardless of their common occurrence. In this model, you also have the option of displaying the frequency of common occurrence as a line label, or to make the line thickness dependent on the frequency of that common occurrence. Finally, it's also worth pointing out that you can open these models from outside Max Maps. You can do this via the context menu that you can open by right-clicking on a document. And that's it. That was an overview of the different model types that you can use in Max Maps. We wish you all the very best with your project.